Hi, in this video I'm going to cover a burn-up chart and how to create one. So a burn-up chart is a project management tool used in agile developments, usually in software development, where you are trying to track or, or measure the progress of a project up to its completion uh, time period. And uh, on the x-axis or the horizontal category axis you have your sprint, which is basically your iteration of that project task and on the y-axis you have your points which are kind of arbitrary measures uh, or work units. Um, some people probably like to use hours, some probably like to use points but in this example I just use points uh, to kind of simplify it. So in your basic burn-up chart you probably just have two series of data. You have your project total point which is basically the amount of uh, total points that the project would take to complete you have your cumulative completed which basically is the the amount of, of completion for the project thus far and in this particular example I'm going to include the estimated trajectory so so basically what this is implying is from the beginning of the sprint cycle to the 12th sprint cycle uh, this this is the trajectory the straight line is what we estimate that it should be done at well wow through the first sec first sprint, second sprint, we should kind of have this straight line. So it's kind of an estimate. But these two other lines, this is this is basically our target. Uh, when you really think about it, our total points is our target. And we have our actuals, which is this cumulative completed. So the burn-up chart is one of those charts where it's kind of good to uh, give stakeholders an idea of where the project team is at. And it's also helpful to give a bigger picture of the project. Say, for example, we have this change at iterate sprint number four and between sprint number four and sprint number five. And this can indicate to other stakeholders that maybe there was a new requirement they got put into the project and that's why the amount of points have gone up. It gives stakeholders a more broader picture of the project team's work because now that we would understand since the uh, new maybe a new requirement came in and the amount of points have increased uh, maybe we should look at this cumulative completed line and give it some consideration uh, when we see that line start to go down so let's go through and see how we create this burn-up chart so I'm gonna go into the second sheet here and for the sprint cycles I'm gonna pretend that there's gonna be uh, 12 sprint cycles from 0 to 0 to 12 and basically each sprint cycle generally is about 30 days now they can be determined by the project team but generally the 30 days so when you really think about it maybe that's the first month this is the second month and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, once I enter that in I'm gonna go ahead and just instead of typing it all down I'm gonna bring the fill handle here and kinda drop it all the way down there and so I get my get my 12 sprints here now the project total points this is kinda determined by uh, the project team in terms of like how many points would this total project take. So let's say for example it will take 1400 points total. So this 1400 points can basically go along the whole uh, line or the whole span of that project. So that's that's going to be the, our initial blue line that we saw in the previous chart. Now this completed is what we would fill in after each month. We would com we would say how much how much it was completed. And this cumulative completed would tell us uh, the total as it adds up per month. So let's say for example the first month is going to be nothing. The, or, or when we start it's going to be nothing. Uh, the first month, by the end of the first month, maybe we have completed uh, 120 hours of uh, or 120 uh, units or points uh, of work. And then the second month another 120 and the third month another 120. And let's say that, you know, let's go ahead and just going to drop this down for this particular example right now. Let's say for each month that's going to be completed. And the cumulative completed basically is the cumulative after each uh, sprint cycle. So this is going to be the first one where we start zero. It's going to be zero. The second one, what ba basically we're going to do is we're going to add uh, the first month plus uh, the previous. And then what that's going to do is now I can just go ahead and take this fill handle and drag it down. It's going to copy the formula and basically it's going to add the first month to what was before and this one will add the, the, the that, that other month to what was before and etc. Now the estimate trajectory, that's going to be our estimate from zero to that end period, it should be 1400. So this is going to equal zero here and the last value is going to equal the total points. What, what, what basically we want to see at the end. All right? Now with the rest of it we're going to have to add a kind of a null value in here otherwise it would not be charted correctly. So for this particular series of cells from E3 to E13 that's going to be the formula. I'm just going to put not applicable 
and close open parentheses, close parentheses, press control enter to fill that out for the rest of the cells, and there we have it. So what I'm going to do right now is I only need to chart a, columns A, B, D, and E. This is for input later on. So if we want to input, maybe we didn't know uh, these so we're gonna we're stuck at nine, but let's say for example I knew all these already. But uh, if we were to use this as a ongoing basis, maybe some of those weren't filled out yet. So let me go ahead and put these back here. Let me go ahead and just uh, bring that fill handle down there. And what I want to do now is basically I'm gonna select a a one two b fourteen. Press Control and then select from D one to E14. The reason why I press the control key is it allows me to do a discontiguous cell selection. Basically I'm skipping uh, column C here. The next thing I want to do is click on the insert tab and click on a scatter chart. And I'm going to select this one which is scattered with straight lines and markers. So now that's kind of set up right there. And what I want to do here is I want to do some formatting now. So basically I want to move this legend down at the bottom because it takes up a little bit too much space. So I'll go to layout, go to legend, and then legend at the bottom, right? And now I also, also want to change this axis here. There's, I want to have it go from uh, zero to one to two, three. I want to have the full count and end at 12 and not 14. So I'm going to select the axis here, right click and go under format axis. And then for the maximum, I want to have that at 12. And then for the major units, these are each of the units that are happening here, zero, one, zero, two, right now it's at two, so every multiple of two, I want to have it at every multiple of one. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click close, and now I have my chart here, and for the estimate trajectory, I'm going to have that a little bit uh, muted, so I'm going to change that into a different color. So with that is selected, right now you can see the uh, the little circles around it. So the selection handles there. I'm, I know that that's selected now. I'll go ahead and right click and go into format data series. And for the line color, I'm going to have the solid line. I'm going to have that little bit gray. I'm going to have that maybe this gray color. I'm also going to have that line style as a, a dash. So I'm going to have that as a dash style. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Maybe uh, 1.5 1 point instead of, uh, instead of um, 2.75. So click close. So the rest of it, I'm going to go ahead and do some other formatting. I'm going to remove these grid lines. I'm gonna click select those, press delete. So we have this straight line here for the total points here. But as we know in most projects, there's scope creep that comes in. Projects cha change, the requirements change. Maybe the stakeholder has indicated that another feature wants to get put in. Maybe in the middle of the project, we have increased some scope. Uh, there's additional requirements in it, and the tr total units needed to complete that project are going to go up. So maybe at that point it's become uh, 1700, right? And then becomes, of course it becomes 1700 for the rest of the project after that because of the additional requirement that was put in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, control C to copy, select this cell, control V to paste, and now that's on the in there. So that indicate so that indicator now tells us that there was some scope creep in there and so now we have it gone up. So now with the scope creep increasing in there, maybe at number five here, maybe the completion has gone down because we don't have enough people to do the additional work. So that might have gone down to 90 now, or, or maybe uh, 100, right? And then that's gone down to 100 and maybe that has kind of brought it all down to 100 there because the additional work to do something has brought it down. And so now we can see that with the additional increase in requirements or some scope creep, we have some of our cumulative completed going down. And so we, we have our estimate trajectory here at the straight line. And we've noticed that since we in introduced some scope creep, uh, our, com our cumulative completed has gone down. Let's say we don't have the benefit of, of knowing uh, what's completed. So let's say we're in our 10th uh, sprint cycle and we don't have that data in there, so that kind of is gone. So we know that uh, as we enter in more information here, maybe uh, we've added more manpower, now it's up to 110, and maybe this is 110, and maybe this is 110. Now all we need to do is just kind of click the fill handle here, double click it to bring the formula down, and now we have a different line for our cumulative completed. Oh, and the last thing we want to do is probably have some additional naming for our chart and our axis. So I can go under the layout, go under chart title, 
Now let's have a name above the chart. We'll call this burn up chart. And then maybe for our axis, we'll have our axis titles, our horizontal title, and we'll call that our sprints. And then for our uh, vertical title, we're going to call that our, oops, I don't think that was the one I wanted to select. We'll have the rotated title here, and we'll call that the points. So that's how you create a basic burn up chart. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.